Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I've done few videos on Jenkins and Kubernetes. For example, this one here is how to deploy Jenkins in your Kubernetes cluster. And then I did another video on how to connect your existing Jenkins uh, that's not deployed inside your Kubernetes cluster. So you've got your existing Kubernetes instance running somewhere and how you can connect that to your Kubernetes cluster and how to run your Jenkins slave agents as pods inside your Kubernetes cluster. And then I also did a video on a continuous deployment from Jenkins into your Kubernetes cluster using Jenkins pipeline, how to deploy Kubernetes apps, your applications using Jenkins pipeline. A few of you mentioned in the comment section of this video that it is not working for you. So basically I just wanted to retest this video, which I did and I found that it is still relevant. So I did this video about 11 months ago, nearly a year ago, and when I retested it, I found that the steps that I mentioned in this video are still relevant. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate, I'm just going to redo this video, but with the latest versions of everything that I used originally in this video. The Jenkins version that I used was 2.1. something, and now I'm going to show you uh, that I'll be using Jenkins, latest Jenkins version, LTS version, which is 2.1. 249 or something and the kubernetes plugin that i installed in jenkins has also been updated to some latest version and the kubernetes cluster that i was using originally in this video was 1.13 1.14 i'm not sure and now i'm going to be using version 1.19 and at the end of the video i'll give you some pointers as to what you need to check to get this working there are like few different things that you need to check so i'm going to be running jenkins as a docker container not inside kubernetes cluster and I've got my Kubernetes cluster running in LXC containers. So let's get started. So I've got my Kubernetes cluster running. If I do kubectl get nodes 1.19.2 kubectl version minus minus short 1.19.2 and I'm running this entire Kubernetes cluster as LXE containers. So now I'm going to bring up my Jenkins pod, sorry Jenkins docker container and the command is Jenkins run, give it a name minus D to run it in the background and I'm going to bind a docker volume. So Jenkins underscore home will be a docker volume that gets created. And I'm binding that inside var Jenkins underscore home. And I'm binding the port 8080 and 50,000 on my local machine. And I'm using Jenkins LTS image, okay? Okay, so that's running. And if I do docker volume LS, so you can see Jenkins home, that's a docker volume. So Jenkins should be running. And if I do docker logs, minus f jenkins okay so jenkins is up and running and that's the password we actually need to initialize our jenkins instance and if i go to my web browser and go to localhost colon 8080 okay signing into jenkins that's the password we just copied continue and i'm going to install the suggested plugins it will take less than a minute i'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done all right, plugin installation completed. Let's create our first admin user. Bank it in and give it a password, full name. Let's say test.example.com. Save and continue. Okay, so Jenkins URL, I'm going to change the Jenkins base URL to be my IP address. IP address of my local machine is 192.168.1.81. Make sure you don't leave that as localhost because the Jenkins slave pod that this Jenkins is going to launch in your Kubernetes cluster needs to connect back to your this Jenkins installation. So make sure to use the IP address so that you can connect back. Save and finish. Start using Jenkins. So that's a plain Jenkins installation and this is version 2.249 I think. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is install the Kubernetes cloud plugin. Create an agent or configure a cloud. So we're going to configure the cloud and go to plugin manager and available. So I'm going to search for Kubernetes and I'm just going to install this one and it's going to pull uh, the dependencies that are required. Okay, so install without restart okay so everything is installed so I'm gonna go back to the Jenkins and now I'm going to configure a cloud so configure a cloud add a new cloud kubernetes right so name kubernetes you want to give if you want to give you can give any name here kubernetes cloud details okay so the kubernetes URL kubectl cluster info okay so that's the kubernetes url which i'm going to copy and paste it here and if i do test connection it will fail because it doesn't have the certificate to connect to my kubernetes cluster so i need to paste in my certificate here 
Or what I can do is if I hover over here, it says the URL of the Kubernetes API server. If you don't set this and you can also add a credential to connect to your Kubernetes cluster. In that case, you don't have to specify the Kubernetes URL because the URL certificate, everything will be taken from this credential. Okay, so let's do it that way. Instead of providing the Kubernetes URL and the certificate, um, I'm just going to add a, a Kubernetes credential. Okay, Jenkins. And here I'm going to specify, I'm going to choose secret file. Okay, so choose file and I'm going to go to the dot cube directory in my home directory and this is the Kubernetes configuration file. Select that and give this a name, my cube config, my Kubernetes config file add okay so now i'm going to choose that configuration and do a test connection and it's connected fine and it has also detected the version of kubernetes that i'm running 1.19 and then jenkins url is the jenkins base url you can specify it but it has already found that the jenkins base url is going to be this one port 8080 jenkins tunnel so this is important so when we started the docker container docker run we specified port 8080, so that's the Jenkins web UI, and 50,000 is the JNLP port, so that's the port the Jenkins slave agent uses to connect back to the Jenkins, and that's what you, you're going to specify here along with the IP address of the Jenkins node 192.168.1.81 colon 50. Thousand. And pod retention pod labels, let's add the pod label, okay. So pod label here, the pod label is when you launch, when you trigger a job and you specify it needs to be run on a Kubernetes slave, then Jenkins will trigger, Jenkins will launch a slave pod in your Kubernetes cluster and that slave pod will have this key value. So type, let's say type is Jenkins slave. For example, if you do this, if you want to search for all the pods started by your Jenkins, you can do kubectl get pods minus L type is Jenkins slave, Jenkins slaves, whatever pod label you specified in your configuration here. Let's call it Jenkins slave. Okay, that's fine. Pod retention, always, never, failure. In case of failure, if you are starting the pod and uh, for some reason it doesn't connect back to your Jenkins or your job runs fine but it fails for some reason in that case you can set it to on failure so that only if the job fails the pod will be retained so you can log into the pod you can log into the exec into the container to see what actually happened why the job actually failed but I'm gonna leave that as never and next is advanced container cleanup timeout default provider template okay now let's go to the pod template add pod template name i'm gonna give this a name let's call it cube pod template details namespace i'm not gonna specify any namespace by default it's going to choose the default namespace but if you want to uh, create your jenkins slave pods in a specific namespace you can do that okay so labels cube pod or cube yeah cube pod okay so this label is different to the uh, one that we created above so this pod label is for kubernetes and you can find your Jenkins pod by specifying this label and it will filter the pods based on this label. And the label you're specifying here, cube pod, this is used by Jenkins. So when you are building a job, when you are creating a job and you specify where the job needs to be run, you can, you can specify this label here. So basically you're saying, I want to run this job on any node that has a label cube pod, okay? And when you specify this, the job the Jenkins will launch a new slave agent and then it will run your job on that particular slave agent okay usage only build jobs with label expression matching this node so if you create any job and if you don't specify any label it won't be run on this particular part add containers okay so container template name let's call it JNLP docker image I'm going to use Jenkins slash JNLP slave colon latest okay working directory i'm going to change that to home jenkins command to run i'm going to empty that field and also that field okay and finally add environment variable environment variable okay so that's a very poor ui design i don't have a way to resize this that's a very 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 poor ui design so if i just start typing in you won't be able to see what i'm actually typing in so the environment variable that i want to attach add to this particular container is let me open up a text editor 
Jenkins underscore URL and the value is HTTP 192.168.1.81 colon 8080 okay so I'm going to copy that Jenkins URL and paste it here in the key field and the value is the Jenkins base URL okay so that's done advanced run as UID so I don't need any of those add container if you want to add multiple containers which we don't want volumes annotations pod retention is default okay I think that's all I want show raw YAML in console in the Jenkins job console I don't want to see the the YAML file okay and I think that's it let's save it okay we are good to go now let's create our first job demo freestyle project okay and let's choose where it needs to be run okay restrict where this project can be run so I want to run this job on nodes that has a label cube part so when I specify cube part it found that label cube part matches no nodes we don't have any slave nodes at the moment that satisfies this label cube part but it matches a configuration from our Kubernetes cloud. So when you trigger this job, it's going to launch a slave agent, a slave pod as per your container definition in the Kubernetes cluster and then run your job there. Okay, and then let's add a build step, a very simple build step. Let's say host name. Okay, save. That's it. And now I'm going to trigger this job, but before that, let me open up another pane and do watch kubectl get pods. Okay, so when I trigger the job, you will see the pod getting created and the, the pod getting terminated after the job completes. And on the top pane, I'm going to watch for the Jenkins logs here. Okay, let's try and trigger this job. Okay, build is scheduled and soon. Yeah, you can see here template for label cube pod cube. So it's using the cube template cube pod template that we created and created pod. And you can see here the pod uh, is getting created and it's going to run the job. And then we will see the pod getting terminated. Okay, so the pod is running. And you can also see that in the Jenkins log pod is running and the pod is getting terminated now, which means the job has completed, whether it's success or failure, we don't know. Let's go and check. Okay, the pod is done and the job is also complete and it's a success. Okay, if I look at the console output, cool. And we were echoing the host name, which is cube8m4st, which is the same pod that we had, cube8m4st. Okay, cool. So that's that's all I wanted to show you. This is just to prove that our uh, the video that I did a year ago, I exactly did the same steps again, but it worked. Uh, no matter the Kubernetes version that I've used, Jenkins version, Kubernetes plugin version, but still the process is same. The reason it might be failing for some of you uh, is I want to show you a quick diagram that I've created. Okay, so you've got your Jenkins. You might be running Jenkins externally or you might be running Jenkins inside the Kubernetes cluster itself. No matter where you're running Jenkins, you've got your Jenkins, you've got your Kubernetes cluster, and the things that you need to really check to get this working is whether Jenkins can connect to Kubernetes cluster. So that's your first step. So when we configure the Kubernetes cloud provider, the first step we did was we informed Jenkins where our Kubernetes cluster is. So we tried using the Kubernetes URL, but we ended up using the kubeconfig file. Either you could use the URL along with the certificate or you can just use your kubeconfig and then press the test connection button. And so that's going to be your first step and if the connection was successful Jenkins can talk to your Kubernetes cluster if not make sure you open this port whatever port your API server your Kubernetes API server is running is listening on make sure to open that port okay so that's the first step the second step is given that the Jenkins can connect to your Kubernetes cluster you will see Jenkins creating slave ports when you trigger a job okay so slave ports are coming up in your Kubernetes cluster but in the Jenkins, if it shows offline, it means that the slave pod can't talk back to your Jenkins cluster. So basically, you need to open up these two ports, port 8080 for the Jenkins base URL and 50,000 for the JNLP traffic. So make sure wherever you run Jenkins, you make sure the worker nodes in your Kubernetes cluster can talk to Jenkins on these ports. Maybe you can do a telnet uh, on the Jenkins IP address on these two ports to see if you can connect to it. 
So that's going to be your second step. The third step is you need to pay careful attention to the container configuration, container template. So here, if I go to manage Jenkins, manage cloud, configure cloud, and this one, Kubernetes cloud details, part template, part template details, all the part specification and the container specification, the working directory, the environment URL, the Jenkins slave agent, uh, slave Docker image that you're using, everything just make sure that you've got your container configuration right just try a few different things to make it work so that's going to be your third test to verify and then finally make sure that whatever image that you have specified in your container configuration for example i specified jenkins dnlp slave latest so whatever you might be using a custom jenkins slave image for your for your needs for your use case so make sure the worker nodes can pull those images from the Docker Hub or from your private Docker registry and so on. So those are the few things that you need to really check. Other than that, it's an absolutely simple workflow that you should get it working, all right? So if you're running this in the cloud provider like AWS or GCP, pay attention to the VPCs where you are running. Maybe you will be running Jenkins on a different VPC and your Kubernetes cluster on a separate VPC. In those cases, you just need to have a VPC peering between those two VPCs and make sure your security groups allow connection uh, to these ports and again on this port between these two instances uh, and services. Similarly in GCP or Azure, whatever it is. Okay, so hopefully, I think it, this should get you going. If not, let me know, I can dig further. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you. Thanks for your time watching this video. I'll see you all in my next video. Make sure to subscribe. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.